Good morning, everyone. Um, for the next maybe about five to six minutes, you know, I'll spend some time. So by the way, um, I'm one of the CTOs in the cloud division where you know, we spend good amount of time uh, playing with some of these technologies, building on top of this, and again, you know, contributing back, back to the community. So for the next maybe five, six minutes, you know, I'll spend some time um, on uh, applications, application platforms, and you know, how that, that fits into, into Kubernetes. Um, I do participate in many of the meetups here in Bangalore. I'm based out of Bangalore. So you can hit me on Twitter, uh, Girish D uh, tweets. Um, so, uh, I mean, like myself, I think many of you have been you know, building applications for quite some time, I'm guessing. So, so perhaps some 10 to 15 years ago, you know, you know, we pretty much had you know, just two technologies we were building applications, right? So there was Java uh, or there was .NET, right? So those were the two technologies or two, two languages where we were uh, you know, building applications. Um, the developers were focused on building applications um, and the heavy lifting of deploying those applications was done by the underlying application platforms. So the role of application platform was doing essentially you know, heavy lifting from security, scalability, integration, and, and doing most of the boring job uh, you know, while giving the time back to you as application developers to focus on you know, building best of the best applications. So what has changed you know, over the period of last you know, maybe about 10 years, T today we are doing the same thing or somewhat similar in the cloud, in the cloud era. Right? So we're building a similar platform to run cloud native applications uh, you know, so that again, you know, same things around security, scalability you know, are available for these cloud native applications. So there are some expectations from, from the uh, application platform. Uh, so Dim's talk, talked about you know, what makes uh, the Kubernetes and uh, you know, what, what it forms as the, as the base. So there are certain things for developers where you know, developers ask for, you know, can I build a stateful application? Uh, let's say a database. Can I build a web application, a stateless web application? Or you know, I want to build an event-driven application, you know, let's say in a serverless application. And of course, you know, the platform has to be you know, very simple and flexible. So there are many application platform vendors you know, are focused on building you know, all and, and addressing all of these requirements. So in cloud native world, so we see you know, essentially that these three um, uh, styles or uh, these three programming styles, right? So there's one which is 12-factor applications, you know, which is pr primarily driven by Cloud Foundry, um, you know, another project in CNCF. Uh, then there's cloud functions you know, from IBM, Azure Functions from Microsoft, Lambda, so these are serverless applications. And the last one is about containerizing and deploying container-based applications. You know, of course, you know, uh, on, on top of Kubernetes. So the good news is you know, over a, the period of, let's say, last three, four years, the community has come together. You know, while there were many projects for doing many things, the community has come together in order to create you know, some sort of you know, opinionated stack. So for example, you know, we are more or less settled on container engine to be container D. And again, you know, we're sort of you know, um, um, settled on the orchestration layer based on uh, Kubernetes. And then of course, you know, there are new projects like Service Mesh, Service Catalog, Knative. You know, we are converging on you know, many of these projects coming together to create that opinionated stack. So you know, we are proud to say that um, IBM has built you know, that particular stack. Um, and today, IBM container, Kubernetes Container Service on public cloud is built on the stack. And we run millions of applications or millions of containers today. It's not just running your applications. So we also have built in a good amount of our investment you know, things around Watson, things around you know, machine learning services things around databases, uh, Cloud Foundry, Functions, Istio. Many of these today run on the same Kubernetes platform. And you know, I don't want to uh, encourage most of you in the crowd you know, to also participate and you know, contribute towards these upstream projects. And actively, I mean, just like you know, what we're doing at IBM, 
you know, I would look forward you know, for many of you to be also actively participating in these projects. So let me switch the gear a little bit. You know, of course, that's our public cloud story. And you know, share a little bit about what we do with our clients. Uh, when we look at our clients, again, I'm bringing this up because you know, many of us here in Bangalore you know, working in most of the GSIs and you know, many of the other uh, captive companies. So we, we focus on this, you know, these type of projects. So there's A, customers are looking to move existing applications over to cloud, containerizing them, and or building brand new applications using cloud native technologies and run it on containers. And the last one is about you know, how do I manage this massive infrastructure you know, running very complex applications. So I'll illustrate this with you know, a very simple example, you know, what we did with American Airlines. So if you look at, if you, if you look at this picture, so it's about using what we call as a, a strangler pattern, where you run both new and existing in parallel, and you know, while you know, they continue to coexist, you, know, you slowly turn off the traffic coming to the old, and then you, know, you send it more and more towards you know, the new applications while delivering features to both until at a tipping point where the, the, the traffic, you, know, you, have, um, you have a critical mass of users using the new, and then you can turn off the old. The reason I'm bringing this up is because today what we have in the community, what we're building around Kubernetes and you know, many of the projects, many of the technologies, allows us to do many of these or implement these patterns. So, at IBM, in addition to what we do on public cloud, uh, we've been heads down for the last couple of years containerizing our entire middleware stack to be certified on Kubernetes. Right? So this essentially, you know, we're taking our existing products and products uh, portfolio and containerizing them and what we call these as cloud packs. So we have about six of them today. So these cloud packs basically range you know, all the way from delivering offerings from Watson to WebSphere to Watson, uh, business pr process automation to blockchains, to APIs to mobile services. So we've got you know, a whole slew of these things. We are building and we are rebasing most of these products and middleware on Kubernetes. And the fact that we are running this on top of this open source platform you know, allows us to scale very well and you know, participate in broader ecosystem. So these cloud packs are certified, secured, and you know, ready to go on day one. And you know, these cloud packs are available for customers to run it on public cloud, private cloud, on premises, or, or whatever. Right. So, so we've been very active um, you know, in the community, and you know, we continue to work with uh, CNCF and seed many of the new projects, you know, upcoming projects, and actively participate. And you know, we look forward to uh, you know, working more, uh, more closely uh, in the community. Thank you.